Hey guys, Spartan Jess here, and today we're finally getting into the Airsoft MA40 tutorial. It's been so long, but I digress here. Let's not waste any more time than we already have, because today I'm not only going to be showing you my own unique way of converting the MA40, I'm actually going to bring on a couple of guests to help me out here today, because the main reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to show you how to create the AEG, the gas blowback, and the HPA version of the MA40. With that out of the way, let's get straight into the video, shall we? First up today, we have my friend Ryan, who's known for creating pretty unique airsoft guns and wielding them at Balahack Airsoft. He's also the guy who actually created the very first HPA MA40. Let's hear what he has to say. All right, here's most of the collection, but what we're gonna look at right now is the MA40, built off of a Nerf gun and turned into a fully self-contained HPA airsoft gun. Here on the back of the gun, when you flip up the hatch, which is normally for clearing jams in the Nerf gun, you find the adjustment wheel for adjusting the hop, as well as the battery connectors for charging the LiPo that stays inside the gun. Up towards the top, got the ammo counter, currently running EPM 170 rounders, so it's set on 170, and the red dot. Down on the side here, Got your safety, so you pull that, the gun fires. Back here is full auto. Turn those back off, and then this button right here resets the ammo counter. You notice it didn't go down at all because the mag is currently empty, so dry firing rounds won't subtract from the current round counter. Now let's have a look inside the gun. It's a clamshell, so just undo a bunch of screws. You can take it apart like so. Down here, see your tank, 13 cubic inch, to polish our reg. The airline comes out through these brass fittings and goes in through just a really long piece of six mil tube, goes up all the way around underneath on the other side and back around into the F2, which drives this thing. M4 magwell, it's release lever there. It's nice and easy, real familiar to use. AK-47 style hop-up unit. Uh, it's just easier to mount than your conventional M4 one, so made making a custom gun that much easier. Nice, long, full-length barrel, 455 millimeters. So kind of long for a gun this short. Up here we have the Ace Tech tracer unit, which does work. And here glued on right at the end of the barrel is the infrared sensor for the ammo counter, which is why the ammo counter doesn't come down if you don't fire anything through it. So it'll actually count BBs that leave the gun. Here is just the trigger unit. It's a very small trigger pull because you're only just depressing the very but very top button on it. And then under here is the FCU that runs the Polar Star and the original trigger board unit. Just use it as a breakout point for all the different switches. Finally, when you take apart the uh, gun all the way down, get rid of everything that is Nerf, this is what you're left with. This is the workings of the MA40. It's all custom parts, 3D printed, modeled and printed by myself. And they're all mounted to this square aluminum extrusion you can pick up at Home Depot. And that is basically the spine, the chassis of the Airsoft gun. Everything just mounts to it and it is positioned so that it fits in the two halves of the clamshell. Next up, we have the Mangy Mutt, who, at the time of recording this video, actually recently got a number one spot in one of the US Airsoft videos pertaining to his AEG MA40. We've actually been working together for a while, so it's pretty cool to see his work in another video. With that little tidbit out of the way, let's see what he has to say about his own unique perspective of the MA40. Hello there, my name is the Mangy Mutt. So Spartan Jess here, he got a hold of me and wanted to do a bit of a collaboration. So I'm gonna try to the best of my abilities here to give you a quick rundown on how exactly I built this, put it together, kind of my thought process going into it and all that. First things first, your main components to this are obviously going to be the Nerf MA40. And then what I did for mine is I actually used an M4. And I've had a lot of people ask me, well, why did you use an M4? And you can see it here. I mean, if you really look at it, I mean, there's your magwell, mag eject, selector switch, all that fun stuff. Why did I use an M4? Well, I did that for a few reasons. Main one, I didn't have any bullpup bases 
to put into this in the first place. So I had to get a little creative in there because I didn't want to go out and buy a whole nother gun and not even know if it would fit. Two, as overused as they are, the M4 is just about as reliable as you can get in terms of AEGs. So I wanted that reliability and upgradability and all that that comes with having a version two gearbox. Um, and of course, being an M4 platform, M4 mags are everywhere. Now, granted, having a full-size M4 mag, it comes out to about here, Looks a little goofy, <laughs> definitely, but I found if you use the short stubby ones that come out to about here, it actually sits rather flush. The second benefit to using an M4 is that in most Nerf guns, especially the motorized ones, have these little latches. Well, I realized if you use a rear wired M4, remove your buffer tube and all that stuff, and I keep this latch, it actually gives me very good access to all of my wire. And there is plenty of space there because the Nerf mag essentially becomes your battery storage. And I mean, there's tons of space in there. And these slide right in here. I can actually fit two of them in here side by side. Perfect fit, nice and snug, doesn't rattle. Uh, and of course, another benefit that I liked having to the M4 was that since if you cut the top of all this out of the Nerf shell, you can have access to a Picatinny rail here. So if you wanted to do say, like some of the Halo 5 AR variants, uh, they have little red dots and stuff like that you could. Now, I didn't do that, but it's nice to have the option. So the first thing you need to do to start taking this apart is this flap right here needs to come out. Next, you'll wanna come back here to your cheek rest. And this part is in a few segments here. You kinda have to just pry it out just like that. And then you lift it up a bit and you do the same for the other side. So that piece, we'll set it aside. Now that that's off, we'll actually come to this butt pad here, which is actually a pretty, just a chunk of plastic, basically. It's oddly solid, and that comes off just like that. And then you'll come up here to the hand guard, and pretty much the same as it has to. Just kind of lift up on it. There we go, lift up. This half comes off, and then there's this little piece right here that also comes off and that would have sat right in there. All right, and with that, that just lifts up there. Here's basically what we're dealing with. You'll see here, you'll notice I didn't take this part off and I'll get to that in a second, but now you can see the insides of it. It's literally an M4. Um, the M4 base that I used was the Classic Army ECS Mark IIs was the body. Now I've done a bunch of internal work to this. It's got a VFC quick change gearbox and a slew of other parts, speed trigger. It's got a micro switch trigger in it. I, mean, I, I did a bunch of stuff to it, but that's besides the point. You could pretty much use just about any M4. The reason I use this one is one, I had it lying around and I don't use M4 as much. So it's a decent choice to use. And two, I noticed was this barrel lug here. Now, of course that's on the base classic army M4 from the factory and I liked it so much because of course this being the inner barrel and muzzle of the nerf gun was the perfect fit and i mean perfect and it even slides right down in that barrel lug perfectly and it just kind of helps one keep this in place but two it kind of just holds everything together pretty decently on its own and now you'll see the dummy ammo counter here i actually modified it to mount to a Picatinny rail. So I could actually take this off and put it on any gun with a Picatinny rail. I dremeled out all of the Nerf bits that connect to those weird thin Nerf rails. And I literally basically bolted a front sight post from a uh, AR that I had lying around. And you can see the bolt there. And I just bolted them together and then re-screwed this back onto it. I will be back as soon as this is all put back together. she is so just like to say thank you to spartan jess for inviting me to kind of show how i did my aeg build of the ma40 and um i hope everyone enjoys and now it's my turn to come up to the stage and present to you the gas blowback ma40 now i gotta come clean here this isn't exactly my method that i came up with personally this is actually the way that gabbler 32 actually created if i recall he's actually the very first person to make the airsoft ma40 now the way he did it is mainly by placing a gas blowback pistol into the back of the ma40 
So I decided to go this route because I figured why not? Why not just give it a shot? It looks pretty simple and my conversions are usually very simplistic. So I wanted to thank Gabbler32 for showing me how to create this unique version of the ME40. So let's get right into it. All right, so now we're going to be going into the steps of how to make a pistol version of the MA-40. Now, keep in mind, you can use any kind of pistol that you want to use, preferably any airsoft pistol that doesn't have a moving front barrel, and that could go fully automatic. The choice of airsoft pistol that I picked personally is the SSP-18. reason why I chose this pistol is one, it has very good performance based off my experience with this pistol so far. The barrel doesn't move which is a plus for what I want. And also it has a fully automatic function right here. Remember, you can use whatever kind of airsoft pistol you want. All you're gonna be doing is placing your airsoft pistol in the back right here. To get our MA-40 prepared for our conversion, first, we're gonna to have to take out this magazine. Now later, I'm gonna to try to use the bottom of this magazine so I could attach it to the mags I use for the SSP-18. Now we're going to have to go through the excruciating process of taking all the screws out of this side of the MA-40. And here's the guts and the interior of the MA-40. Next we're going to have to unscrew this flywheel right here and then we'll proceed to take out the wiring. Make sure you don't misplace some of these parts inside of this MA-40 because we're going to be using some of these internal bits to connect to our airsoft pistol that we're going to be installing into this. So the trigger here will actually activate our trigger on our airsoft pistol. Now we can take out some of these orange internal bits of the Nerf MA-40. Make sure to keep this little orange U-shaped bit right here, because this is what's going to be connecting your flap back here to make it lock in place whenever you close it. So what we're going to be left with internally is the orange trigger, this long rod that connected to the flywheel, and the internal barrel. So we'll be cutting off the barrel just about right here so we can hold the front of our airsoft pistol right there in place. Dremel a little bit around here. And once we cut our barrel right here, we're actually gonna be taking this piece, putting our pistol here, and taking that barrel piece right back here. So whenever our slide's gonna be racking back and forth, that piece will stabilize it so it doesn't go out of place. All right, so now I'm doing some test fitting. As you can see, I've dremeled and picked at some of the plastic supports that are in the magwell and in this middle compartment of the MA-40 as well. With the slide racked back, we get to test fit to see where it's gonna be placed. This plastic supports right here is going to prop the pistol grip of your airsoft pistol right here. As you can see where we cut the MA-40 barrel, this is basically gonna hold the front of your airsoft gun. In the back, fitting the excess MA-40 barrel that we cut off, and we're gonna be putting it right back here. Apply some of the final stabilization for for our airsoft pistol. So now that we cleared most of the back space of the MA-40 on this side of the shell, now we're gonna to have to move on to the other side of the shell. So same as before, we're gonna to have to start dremeling right here where this support deviates a little bit up here so our slide can rack back and forth a little bit up here as well. And you're also gonna to have to dremel this a bit back here just so whenever our slide is racked all the way back, it won't be slamming into the back of this plastic support right there. So progress so far, I've done some things off camera, so I'm going to update you real quick. As you can see, I have added my charging handle to my SSP-18. I took a piece of aluminum elbow. I cut a little bit up top on the sides and I bent it by using a vise. Dremeled a hole on the top of this aluminum elbow so the front sight of the SSP-18 could fit right in the middle of this charging handle. Then I use JB Weld to attach it together. So in the future, if I want to take this charging handle off, all I got to do is take off this slide and uh, unscrew the front sight because the charging handle is only attached to the front sight of the SSP-18. So 
works like a charm. And I also attached this piece of the cut inner barrel as well. Another step I made was I dremeled an entire area for the charging handle to be exposed. As you can see, I dremeled all the way right at the base of this green painted line right here and a little bit up top. I believe I dremeled a little bit too much up top, but either way, I still have the charging handle freely exposed right there. Here's the interior of where I dremeled it. Now there's usually a uh, support beam that's right here that I dremeled and cut off. And uh, in the interior, all the places that I dremeled, I sanded down, make it so it's not rough on the pistol. Oh, my baby. You, you'll be missed. <laughs> now we're gonna be moving on to our trigger system. At first, I was gonna be using some plastic bits that were already inside of the MA-40. Construct them in a way so that uh, the trigger could attach. And honestly, it wasn't really working that well for me, so. We're not gonna be using that. We're actually gonna be constructing our own little trigger system made out of aluminum bits and pieces. So as you can see, I constructed my own little piece right here, sanded it down to create a little hole. Now the reason why I put another smaller aluminum bit inside of this one, whenever I put it in the pistol's trigger guard, every time I push back with the MA40's trigger, it's not going to essentially rise up and force this trigger mechanism to push back. Took a drill bit, drilled holes in between all the parts. I could have a couple of my own bolts and uh, attach with a nut on the other side. I also took the other end of the aluminum and JB welded the heck out of it, as you can see right here. <laughs> I made two little aluminum bits to be placed in between the MA40 trigger so it could help stabilize the trigger in between this aluminum piece. By JB welding it, it's gonna be pretty tough and it's not really going to go anywhere. And I also made these little aluminum strips with holes on the side, so essentially this part's gonna be in the middle right here where the trigger is and the rod is going to connect over here to the MA40's trigger system. Every time we pull this trigger right here it's going to activate the SSP-18's trigger. So now let's uh, construct our trigger mechanism shall we? There's our assembled trigger system. So up next, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to install an ammo counter. If you wanna use the same one that I'm using, I'm using the Westaby Mark IV ammo counter. If you want even more information about how to assemble one of these ammo counters, click the card in the right side of the screen up above, and that'll lead you to one of my older videos. It teaches you to put together an ammo counter. Open up our fake ammo counter in the MA40. And this is gonna be the interior of it. Now our ammo counter is a little wider than our fake MA40 ammo counter, so there's gonna be dremeling involved. However, instead of dremeling the glass, you'll probably have to dremel this little plastic piece. So what this consists of, the little plastic glass piece and this piece that has a sticker on it. So you could probably dremel the bottom of it off so you could just probably keep the top portion while it rests on top of the actual ammo counter. So probably gonna have to dremel away the screw support right here so I can put my ammo counter a little further down and let it illuminate through the glass of the MA40's counter. These holes that I dremeled at the bottom will grant me access to shift between the different settings that I have already put in place for my ammo counter. I have been working on this all day. That's for a regular mag. This is for extended. And this is for aesthetic. And the best part... It works! So now that we have our ammo counter basically working, we're gonna to try to organize it inside the body. So where I've decided to place my power supply and the button for the ammo counter, basically where the battery housing for the original Nerf power supply used to be, just kind of in this crevice here, there's your power supply. And as you can tell, been a little busy. I've actually dremeled a little hole here so I could place my button on the back. I've actually hot glued it to death. <laughs> it's pretty safe and secure in there and surprisingly whenever I uh, place the button into this little slot that I've dremeled it actually kind of clicks so it's kind of pressured in there and it's also hot glued in there. I also made sure to organize my wiring a little better and once I found that the wires are kind of out of the way of my pistol uh, I just decided to hot glue them into position so they don't move around during performance. As you could tell, I routed it back to here. 
Stuffed my switch back here and I have a piece of wood to help stabilize it with a nail that's connected to it. And whenever the SSP-18 fires back and forth, well, so will the switch. I've also made sure to check whenever the slide racks all the way back that the back of our slide here actually makes contact with our switch. I also drilled a hole on both sides of the shell right in front of that scuffed up orange and black piece just so my wires can be easily placed into the Nerf body. So now we're going to assemble the housing of our ammo counter. I also cut our little plastic slash sticker piece in half. I'm going to be saving the top portion of it. I'm going to be placing it on top of our ammo counter. And I've also cut a little bit of a transparent green binder giving the look of a green tinted ammo counter. Yes, we got it, got it. And the screw holes are on the other side. Of course they are. Got it. To finish up the ammo counter, I actually took the top portion of the uh, rail attachment up here. It's supposed to lock these two little pieces inside of the ammo counter body. I took that and I screwed two tiny screws into them so it could hold the front of the ammo counter a lot better. Since we kind of took away that pillar that was right here in the way of the ammo counter, we needed something to hold the bottom of this ammo counter together. So if you run into that problem, just do the same thing that I did. And it works. So now we get to our final step, assembling our finished MA-40. Now, before we do that, I kind of wanted to point out a couple of things. I made my MA-40 magazine compatible to fit onto the SSP-18 magazine by attaching a piece of wood by JB Weld and also attaching a mag base by JB Welding. I also cut a little bit of the front so it's easier for my mag to go in from this side instead of coming from the back because there's literally no room in the back for the magazine to enter into. But yeah, it actually works pretty well. Also, as you can see, I actually added a couple of extra screw holes into my aluminum trigger system here, just to make it a little bit more stable. And one of the last things I wanted to mention was I actually made this piece of wood. Uh, this actually helps stabilize the back of the pistol a lot better. And I also have foam on both sides of the MA-40. Now with that out of the way, let's enjoy our finished MA-40. 